Tell me the biggest obstacle for you when it came to comedy. I mean, I know that comedians have obstacles as far as like they're going through the ranks because ugh, I don't know. I, I relate it to the acting industry, mm -hmm. you know, and we just we have to grind it. It's just like meeting the right people, getting into the right, it's timing. And like you said, yeah. a lot of it is timing. I mean, is this the same way with comedians? It's kind of like timing who you know, how you get there, um, who you're, you're associated with at the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, is that all the same in the acting industry? I mean, as it is, you know, in the comedy world? It, it can be. I think maybe it is at when you're at a, a higher level. You know, it's kind of like there is this this sweet spot. And I look at maybe guys that are at a, such a high level, you know, and not to bring them up all the time, but, you know, Adam Carolla and Jimmy Kimmel could not be more opposite, but they're best of friends. And they both at a point in their career where they can go, I don't give a shit if you guys don't think we should be friends. I love this guy and I'm going to hang out with him regardless of his politics, mm -hmm. where you know, if you kind of go a little uh, lower down the rung, you kind of get, you know, like right now, like there's a lot of people that don't hang out with a certain comedian who got canceled and who is trying to get himself back up on stages and they don't want to be associated with him. I know a guy who canceled 10 shows with this comic and just went, I can't be associated with you. When you're at my level, I can just float around. I'm like, everybody out here is a nobody. <laughs> <laughs> we so, just, yeah, the whole yeah. cancel thing. I'm like, is yeah. that still happening? Or is that kind of like finally kind of, yeah. I mean, because it, that cancel thing killed comedy. Yeah. I mean, I know that, I mean, some of the greatest comedians were like, I, I, I don't even know what to do anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, for me to to chime in for a sec, like I love Louis C.K. I think I've seen him live a couple of times and I still think he's a funny guy. What he did was not, <laughs> at all cool in any specific way but the only this is just my opinion but the only thing that I'll give him props for is that within 24 hours of all of that nonsense to come out like he to me he and especially around whenever everything was blowing up he was the first one within 24 hours saying like going like yep I did it I'm gone and then yeah. all of a sudden he he really was gone and now he's trying to make his little comeback but I haven't seen any of his comedy since then or whatever but at the same time now i have to i guess part of the reason is because I, I now have to take an extra step to go to his website and like check it out and everything and so it's like all right well there's a lot of other comics that for me to check out so i'll just keep uh keep moving on however mm -hmm. another like kind of cancel s kind of and, and and rudy you'd be really helpful with this so like Hassan minaj um just had a joke controversy thing i'm not too too sure on the specifics of it but mm -hmm. i thought he would be a fantastic show for a uh, fantastic host for the daily show and he did his own little spot for it and then this joke controversy came out because he told some other version of what the actual truth was and then everybody yeah. went nuts. But in my mind, I'm like, isn't that what comedy is? Like, it's just kind of another version of the truth. You're telling stories, but you may use these little little, little bits and pieces just to get to that punchline, to get to that setup. Like, if it's, even if it's all true or even if it's all like kind of a lie, it's all in good entertainment and to you know, get a laugh, right? Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. How, how does, I mean, how are, it's hard to work around that, I would imagine. Yeah. I, I, for me, I have my own set of rules, which is when I'm on stage, I can say and do whatever I want. The second I get off the stage, if somebody asks me about whatever that joke was, I have to give them the true version of where that joke came from. So if, for, for instance, yeah. So for instance, for me, like uh, I do a joke and I always say like every joke I write is embedded in truth. It might not be a hundred percent true, mm -hmm. but it's definitely a little, in fact, going back to my grandfather's bit, the bit that I do is he says, you know, uh, when he, he said when he died, he wanted his ashes to be spread because he was in World War II. He wants his ashes to be spread at Pearl Harbor and then don't live a life of fear. And so I decided to go skydiving and when I got to Hawaii, I jumped out that plane and I wish somebody would have told me that skydiving is the worst way to spread someone's ashes. Oh my God, it was a goddamn mess. Now, now, does, did I really jump? Did I really jump out of a plane with my grandfather's ashes? I'm and putting no, that in my of course will not. Now. No, yeah. But if somebody were to ask Can me, you I'm imagine? Saying, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's actually part. Of, oh my God, Jesus! Now part part of my grandfather literally and figuratively lives inside of me. Exactly, went up your nose. Yeah, yeah. and um, 
<laughs> you know, so was that a true story? No. <laughs> but did my grandfather really say you need to make sure that everything that you're afraid of, you need to go out and do. The things that scare you are things that you have to do. <laughs> Absolutely.